Well, hey everybody, since I've got my workbench kind of in order again, uh, underneath here, uh, I am gonna start on a kit here. Uh, this is the Carolina Craftsman Kits uh, Dan's Shop. Working on this kit with my son, William, uh, who is interested in seeing how this all goes together. Say hi, William. Hi. So he's sitting next to me, and we're looking at this laser cut wood kit, and William, I don't think you've done a laser cut wood kit before, have you? No. No? Well, I haven't done many, so we'll learn together. How about that? Okay. So here's the four wall. It's a very simple structure. It's just got the four walls. And unfortunately, this one was broken, but that's very easy to fix. Uh, it came with all the windows and doors that one needs, uh, some cardboard for presumably both the base and the roof. Uh, it did not come with instructions, so we will figure it out. Uh, it's got the seven windows, the two doors, uh, as William points out. Uh, one of them's got the uh, the two windows above the door, which is obviously for that, and then the shorter door is on the back side. Comes with some shingles, and that's about it. There's a few little detail parts here. There's a lampshade there, uh, and there's also some chimney and uh, roof type detail there. Um, I think rather than use this lamp, I will probably use, I have some gooseneck lamps with LEDs so we can actually light it up. That's cool, right, William? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we'll do that. We'll just, we'll have a lit up uh, porch light uh, on it. And if you look at the kit, it just goes right next to the tall door. So that's the plan. And first thing we gotta do, William, is we gotta repair that wall. We need to flip all this stuff over and brace it and we probably want to put a little primer coat on our windows here. So we're going to go do that. The kit also comes with, uh, this is presumably a couple pieces of eighth inch, I believe, eighth inch, I can measure, yes, yes, eighth inch, uh, strip wood, which is good for bracing. And then presumably uh, this piece with the blue that's smaller than that uh, would be good for uh, corner trim. So that's how we're gonna build it anyway. That's everything that was in the bag. Uh, so we will work on repairing this, uh, then we will brace it, and we will prime our windows tonight. How's that sound, William? Good. Good, you excited? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. All right, me too. All right, we'll be back uh, when we've made a little progress. William's working on cutting those windows out. All right, with William's help, we have the windows and doors cut out and ready for priming. And we are shifting our attention over here. Let me pull out just a little bit. I've cut and measured one uh, of the uh, eighth inch square bracing pieces. And now I'm gonna use the chopper to cut the rest of them uh, for the right height uh, of the sides and sort of down the, probably put one here and there and there, and then there, there, and there, and then one on each side of this and this, and maybe one taller one up the middle. So I've got the size set here for the shorter ones. So we'll cut those on the chopper. Then we'll come back and uh, make a couple a little bit longer ones for the center of the ends where the eaves are and glue those on. It's bracing. All right, William and I are back. It's the morning. And this, all these braces dried overnight. And the reason we did this, William, remember, so that when we do what? When we stain this side, it keeps it from doing what? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> Warping, we don't want it to warp. So we, we brace it up so that it doesn't warp. And then what we did is these long side pieces, we put the braces all the way against the edge and the shorter side pieces, we brought them in the width of a brace so that when you put them together, it'll fit nicely and butt up right against the edge. So that was by design. So I've done one or two wood kits before and remember that <laughs> there are no instructions in this one. So we are doing our best, but uh, it's, this ain't rocket surgery, right? So uh, next steps, William, you gotta go to school, but after school, maybe later this evening, we can put some stain on here and put our primer on our windows. What do you say? Okay. All right. All right, we'll be back later. All right, next step here. William, what are you doing? I'm roughing the wood. Roughing the wood with a wire brush? And why are you doing that? Uh, to, uh... Remember about the stain? Oh, yeah. What about the stain? It'll make it 
better. They'll make it show up a little better. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Good job, William. Good technique. All right. Uh, we are going to use uh, Hunter Line stain uh, driftwood. And uh, William, you ready to stain this guy? Yes. All right. And we get the stain on here. I'm also going to go ahead and do the back just again to help with the warping. It'll keep things a little bit straighter. How does it do that? Well, instead of it warp, instead of all the liquid being on one side and it warps and curves a certain way, if you put the stain on both sides, then both sides are wet and it's less likely to want to warp. Oh. Just want to stain our trim piece here. So there's one half of it, and I'll just uh, grab the other half. I guess I'm not going to quite get the whole thing, so I will use the brush to get it in the middle. And good. All right. Set that aside to dry. Okay, just going to put a little primer coat on the doors and windows. And we are using Tamiya. XF66, this is just the light gray. I'm gonna thin it way down with isopropyl alcohol. So just get the airbrush loaded up here and, uh, and then we'll be right back. All right, let's get a little light coat of primer. All right, so uh, now that the stains are all dried, I'm gonna dry brush some antique white on here and give it a look of, of peeling paint, right William? Yeah. Okay, so we'll just come in here. This is just antique white, just cheap, 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 cheap acrylic. I think I got that probably at Walmart. Too much of that would give it like a new look, which is the opposite of what we're trying to go for. That's exactly right. We're trying to All right, so we're gonna do the windows, uh, doors, and corner trim next. And we're gonna use uh, this light avocado, kind of a pale green color. And we're gonna sponge paint this part. Just put a little bit there on the cardboard. And I've got a little sponge here. I've kind of torn some bits and parts of it off. And uh, so just get in there, get, get a little bit of paint, and then dab it off. it's almost dry and then come in here and come along our trim pieces All right, the last thing I want to do is just brush a little bit of this sort of uh, raw wood color. Just dry brush it over the ridges. So that's going to be our last step here. 
on the wood and then we'll see what things look like. And then uh, now that we're getting ready to assemble, I want to come along and just any little bits of glue maybe that stuck out the side or just kind of clean up the area where the doors and windows are going to go. So I've got just a, a, a jeweler's file I'm going to do that with. Just... All right, now we're putting the, a little bit of wood glue on the backs of the some of the doors and windows here. So we'll get those attached. Okay. Just like that, it's done. Just like that though. That door's in. Good, keep it on the back. Good, that's, that's probably enough. It doesn't take much. That is the big door. And go in. Nice. Good job, son. Good work. Okay, we are putting the sides together. So I'm doing a long and a short, and I'm using this corner jig that I got from Micromark. Very, very handy for making nice right angle turns. It's magnetic, and uh, yeah, the magnets just hold the walls in place. And what I did was, remember how I did the bracing? Uh, here. So this one was on this wall and that one was on that wall. And so I just grabbed this one with the gap in it and just put glue right on that little seam and cram them together. Couldn't be easier. Uh, same thing over there, exact same uh, weight. And then when I put the two halves together, I will do it in the jig as well. So that's a super handy tool uh, for building kits and whatnot. So moving along. All right, with the walls drying, we've now turned our attention to the shingles, which I've got set up here in the paint booth. Now, I wanna use the back of the scrap uh, of, of the shingle sheet on the right, just right, right before the tape, this section here um, that has not got any pattern on it uh, for some window shades. And I like the color already, but I'll just be able to flip it over and use the back, so that'll work fine. Um, but the shingles uh, come in these sh uh, strips and uh, they're actually sideways, so up and down will be this way. So whatever streaking and things like that I do with them, I'm going to want to do it, uh, you know, in, in, in a horizontal here. So that it's... First thing I want to do is get a little primer on here. I think I'm just going to use some flat black uh, for this, just nice and dilute. Um, blow it at about uh, 20 PSI. I'm try that, see how that works. I don't want to shred the paper, <laughs> beat it all up or separate the... The, the shingles uh, from each other just yet, so um, the strips of them. So I think that uh, lower PSI will help. So we'll see how that works. Okay, with a little black and gray primer on there, I'm gonna use a couple of uh, like buff and, and earthy type colors and maybe try to tie it in with some of the colors that'll be in the scenery. Okay, for that I used, uh, used flat earth, to me a flat earth, I turned the pressure way down. I'm down around 15 PSI now and got in real close and just made Again, just passes left to right, which of course, once this is on a building, that'll be vertical to give it like a streaking sort of weathered look. Uh, I might try a little buff, although I might be getting a little bit light there. We'll try it. And uh, if I don't like it, I can always just come back over top of it with a different color. Mm, let's, uh, let's do some more. All right, so that's the look I got. That's just flat black, some gray, a little bit of flat earth and some buff just all mixed together. So that'll make some nice patterns. I will intentionally 
mismatch the shingles when I put them on the roof so that they don't all <laughs> line up with uh, the streaks going perfectly down. And just give them a little bit of an aged weathered look and some variation. So uh, we will uh, we'll press on. Look, uh, the shingles are done, at least the base uh, paint layer. All right, William and I have our structure together, right, William? Yep. And we got our trim on the corners. How do you think that turned out, bud? I like it a lot. You like that? And now we've started doing the windows, and for that we're just using some acetate, which I'll show, just sheets of it you can buy. And then the shades, like I mentioned before, are uh, the, the margins of the paper that the shingles came on. And so we're just gluing that stuff in here. A uh, big chunk of acetate across and then little pieces of uh, that paper that, that the shingles came on for the shades and we're intentionally doing them at different lengths and the one on the left is a little bit crooked and uh, that's how it looks. So William, I'm going to hand you the phone and let you show how we do this window on the end over here. How's that sound? Okay. All right, so the first thing we want to do is get some canopy glue down here and get it kind of on the wood all around the window. A little bit more. It doesn't need much, but uh, didn't have enough left on the brush there for the top of the window. And then maybe a little something across there. And then I'm just going to take my forceps and I've got a little one inch wide strip of acetate we cut from one of those sheets. And then I'm cutting the strips from that to make the window glass. So I'm just going to come in here like so. All right, and next we'll grab uh, just a little strip of this. That should be wide enough for a shade. And for the shades, I was just using a little bit of uh, carpenter glue uh, brushed on. And I'll grab this with the forceps like before. And uh, I don't know, how about uh, roughly three quarters of the window be open? So we'll go like that. Pivot the camera up so you can see what it looks like. There it is. Cool. All right, we'll keep on with this and come back when we're done. Okay, just wanted to show this real quick. Uh, I've cut the roof out and made it fit, and it just the kit came with a piece of cardboard um, from which I cut the roof. And what I did was I put a little wood colored, I think I used khaki, and then let that dry and then sponged on some of that same um, light avocado, the same trim color that we used everywhere else around the sides of it. You want to get this, the edge and then underneath of it. You won't see most of that, but there is a slight overhang the way I cut it. So just wanted to show that real quick. Uh, so I'm going to get this glued on top. Uh, of the structure. Now that I finish with the windows and the shades with uh, William's help, we'll glue the roof on and, uh, and then be ready to do the shingles. All right, putting the shingles on now, uh, just doing uh, strips. Uh, you cut the strips off that sheet I showed before where we'd airbrushed the, the streaks into it, cut them off into individual ones, and then I'm just sort of doing the best I can to you know, set each one sort of not in line with the one above it and let the overhang be what it'll be. And then afterwards I'll come in with a very sharp blade and cut the edges off and probably touch them up with some, you know, grimy black type paint. Uh, but that's sort of how it's gonna look pre-weathering. Uh, more to come, I'm gonna flip to the other side. Um, what I'm using to do this is I'm just brushing on just regular old Elmer's school glue. That's cardboard and that's paper. So uh, regular old Elmer's school glue. I started with um, carpenter's glue and it was drying really fast and that was causing some issues. So switched over to the regular white glue, the cheap stuff, and uh, it, it doesn't dry as quickly and it's just a little easier to work with. So I'll go on and, uh, and finish the other side. Uh, William was helping me with the beginning. Uh, he has now moved on to other things. So it's just me, I'll, uh, I'll bring us home here. All right, all those last shingles set up, turning my attention to one of the last things in this build, which is the little chimney smokestack pipe thing coming out the roof. Uh, and here's the parts for it here. I'm gonna go ahead and build it uh, on raw plastic so that the 
the, the plastic weld uh, works better and then give it a paint. And I'm just gonna go uh, probably a, a grimy black kind of color and then rust it a little bit and then attach it to the roof. So uh, can't crack on with that part. All right, well, with a little bit of streaking on the roof and some more on the clapboard walls, I think uh, we're done here. Uh, it was really fun, uh, really easy kit to put together and just sort of practice some weathering techniques and uh, really fun to do it with my son. So glad he was able to join. Uh, hope everyone is uh, well and safe and uh, we'll see you all next week.